Welcome to this episode of Fort Worth Forward. I'm Michael Crane, and we're here at the Tarrant County College Trinity River Campus to meet with the T3 Partnership about education in the workforce and how those are affected here in the city of Fort Worth. We'll also be meeting with representatives from Hillwood as well as JPS because they're major partners in this initiative with us in the city. Let's go. And now I'm here with Natalie Williams, who's the executive director of the Tarrant Two and Through Partnership or T3 Partnership. Welcome, Natalie. Happy to be here. Thank, thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. For our viewers that don't know what T3 is, tell us about it. T3, um, at its core, is an organization dedicated to ensuring that students throughout Tarrant County reach their fullest potential. Uh, we believe in the power of education. And our program model it spans more than a decade. And it's tiered and layers of support to ensure that students along that pathway and their families are engaged and um have the ability to understand and know all of the great opportunities that are available, not just in high school, but also in college. We want students to find their best fit pathway to a family sustaining wage job by completing either a certification credential in high school or college. Okay, great. And I, th I think that's one of the things we're doing right now is that this is your first cohort that you're graduating, I think this year. Yes. Tell us how that came together and what that means really. It's amazing. It's the year of the four-year graduate. We That's certainly right. have had um, students who have graduated from uh, Tarrant, County, Tarrant County College um, in two-year programs, but this will be the first time we will have students graduating um, from our eight partner institutions of higher education. So it's a, it's a big year for us. Um, it's truly a celebration of um, student success, student empowerment, and we're excited to see where they take their future right here in Tarrant County. That's great. And, and I, I think it's worth pointing out, I read something recently. This is, this is pro these students have the most adversity through school because they entered really when COVID was in its heyday in 2020, right? Fall of 2020. And now they're graduating uh, with everything else going on, right? That's right. And um, you mentioned that the students, um, you know, started their education journey or partnership with T3 in um, the middle of COVID. And we were actually founded and started in the middle of COVID. Yes, that's right. That's uh, right. So many of our staff members hadn't had an opportunity to meet each other when they first started yeah. and trying to um, mentor students remotely, help them navigate everything and start up. So it, I think on a lot of levels, this is not only a celebration of the success of the founding of T3, but also our partnership and collaboration with the community and students to make this happen. That's that's wonderful. And uh, you are don't have an education background, really. You're a lawyer by training. So how how did you get into this and and find your passion here? So you're exactly right. I don't have an education background by training. I am a recovering attorney, but <laughs> me I, too. It's okay. okay yeah, there that's we right. Go. That's right. There's many of us out uh, there. I will say I come from a family of educators. Yeah. My mother was uh, an educator and. She actually worked in schools that are very similar to the schools that we work in. And what was instilled in me from a young age is the power of um, choice that education affords you. So when I look at this work and I look at how we want to empower and support students and connect them on that pathway, I want them to have the power of choice and recognize that the possibilities are really endless and get them connected to um, their dreams and make them a tangible reality. And I, I think as we've seen these last few years, there's been somewhat of a shift, right? At least when I was growing up, you're going to college, you're going to college, you're going to college. I think we figured out that maybe there are better paths forward for students and it's not necessarily college, it's a degree or cert certification or something else. Talk a little bit about that journey that you have with students as they go through the process. Yes, we've learned a lot. Or about with parents too, as, as yet, right? Yes, it, yes. It's, it's a beautiful intersection. So one of the things, if you know, um, you have um, middle schoolers, or you can, you know, take yourself back to that time. I've still got an elementary schooler, so okay. I'm still there in the middle of it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So uh, when you tell them what they're supposed to do, they will immediately say, "That's exactly what I don't want to do." Right. Right. Um, right. Yeah. So when we look at that from the perspective of students, we ask students, "How do you envision your life? How do you want to live? What is the lifestyle that you want for yourself?" And so they take the Texas Reality Check and they get a number, and they um, find out what it's going to take to support the lifestyle that they choose. That's a test called Texas Reality Check. You can go on and okay. yep, Texas Reality Check. 
And so from there, the students' eyes are open. Well, yeah, if you want an apartment and if you want a car and if you want all these other things, there's a cost associated with it. And then from there, we say, well, let's figure out how we make that a tangible reality for you through the power of education. And so what they begin to see is that, wow, I need to maximize and take advantage of every opportunity that's available in high school. So then they begin thinking, well, what certification do I need to complete? Well, if I complete an associate's degree in high school and I have those two years, then I go on to four year, I'm two years closer to getting the lifestyle I want. Absolutely. We envision a space where students are actually going into counselor's office and saying, this is what I envision for my future. I'm ready to partner with you to make it happen. So that's at the core, I think, of T3 partnership is that student agency, student voice, and then parent empowerment and engagement. So they see that the possibilities are truly endless. And to your point, um, there are so many pathways and they're not always four year. We certainly have that. We provide uh, for students and families who meet certain income thresholds, opportunities to attend uh, college tuition free. But for students who say, I, I really want to go directly into the workforce, we want to ensure that they have direct pathways to be able to do that and find a pathway to a family sustaining wage job. I mean, that's a great way to put it. And it's very important for us now. And we're going to talk later on the show, some people that are employing some of these that are, can go directly into the workforce. There's been a lot of growth in the last four years. What, what do you think's driven that with the T3 partnership? I think what's truly driven it is our model. Mm -hmm. So we have what we call a T3 connection continuum. And as we've been talking to partner districts, there's not anywhere else that takes this intersection of four core pillars that start with families envisioning the future for their student, connects that to students in high school and advisors and helping them you know, chart their course and skill them up for these jobs and opportunities. And then looking at our workforce development arm that brings together all aspects of the community. So we will talk about our partners and one of our strong partners right now is JPS. They are truly envisioning what this looks like in terms of a pathway for students who are in the health sciences. And it's rare that you have the opportunity to truly co-design and co-create uh, what this indispensable um, entry-level position might look like and then begin skilling students up while they're already in high school and getting them prepared for that. And then on the other side, we have that same advising that happens in college. Mm -hmm. So in college, we have that, that support from near peer advisors and our staff that ensures they find that sense of belonging, that um, they are acclimating and thriving through graduation. So I think what makes us unique is that it's a broader ecosystem and we recognize that we're not doing this in isolation. In fact, we can't. Right. Um, we do have a great comprehensive model, but is, it's the support of the broader community bringing in our industry partners, bringing in other uh, nonprofit organizations through our impact network to help stand up extension support services for our students. That's the power of our model. And we want to bring all different individuals and organizations into the fold with us. Yeah, that's awesome. What it sounds like is you're working with JPS and, and Hillwood is also going to here as well. A lot of your partners in understanding here are the workforce needs of tomorrow. So what are we doing today to make sure that we are educating the children? And it may be a four year degree. It may be a certification uh, or some other uh, degree that they can get maybe with those as part of this. Is that is that kind of hit on what you're doing here? It does. And you mentioned uh, Tom Harris and yeah. Hillwood and his role on the mayor's council has been really instrumental and pivotal as well. So Tom has been the champion of um, all aspects workforce development pipeline, ensuring that students have those experiences that they can envision their future by truly experiencing internships and apprenticeships, but also opening the doors for us to have that connection and talk to industry leaders and uh, partners about how can you be truly the, the vision or the face of these career clusters. Right. So health sciences, thinking about JPS and looking at other um, of the career clusters, Thomas connecting those and getting us to a place where um, students not only go on and envision their future, they actually envision where, where they would take work. advantage yeah. of that future. It's kind of a sort of a modern take on, an, as you already said, internship or something else, or an externship that they, they really can be career ready. Absolutely. And I think that's the whole idea here is to be career ready when, when people graduate. Yes, being career ready. And I think the um, other unique aspect is when does career ready start? Yes. So for a student who's graduating from high school and wanting to go great in, right into the career, well, that looks a little bit different than a career professional. Right. So we have the ability in partnership with industries to um, skill students up 
get them career ready before they actually step into um, that first opportunity out of high school. That's great. When you uh, people you want people to think about T3, what do you want them to think about uh, as part of this? I first and foremost, I want them to, to think about our students. Okay. So when you first said T3, what immediately came to mind are T3 ambassadors and all of our students that we are working so hard to provide opportunities. But I also want them to think about the future. Okay. Uh, we are growing uh, the future. We are setting up the future generation and the future is part of our vibrant city of Fort Worth, vibrancy in Tarrant County. So investing in that future and partnering with us. So when they think of T3, I'd like them to think about investing in the future of Tarrant County, investing in education and giving students the power of choice. Wonderful sentiments. Uh, how can people find you? Uh, you can find us on our website, okay. uh, t3partnership.org. Great. Thanks again, Natalie. Thanks for being here. Thanks for all you're doing to ensure we have a ready workforce and that we're educating our youth. It really is true what you said. They're our future. Um, we all want to invest in our own kids. But we have to invest in all the kids across the county and, and really for the state, too. I mean, we, we have, uh, the growth is coming. It's here. It's already here. So what we can do is, is very important. So thanks for what you're doing. Absolutely. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to champion what I am so passionate about and to create those clear pathways to bright futures. That's awesome. Thanks. And now I'm here with Tom Harris, who's executive vice president at Hillwood, and he's co-chair of the Mayor's Council on Education and the Workforce. Welcome, Tom. Thank you. Glad to be here. Happy to have you here. You, you do a lot of things. I could have given you about 20 titles as we introduced you, but um, I'm very excited you're in this role now uh, with the Mayor's Council, talking about education, workforce, et cetera. What does that mean to you? Because obviously there's a bridge there with what you do on a daily basis at Hillwood. Right. So... Um, I had the opportunity to meet Mayor Parker prior to her current role. And I have done uh, a lot of work with Hillwood over the almost 35 years I've been with Hillwood at Alliance on the workforce development and education side. So I was kind of the senior guy that had the relationships with all the school districts and also uh, worked on a number of different workforce development projects at uh, Alliance. Um, developing a workforce center with the Texas Workforce Commission, worked very closely with Tarrant County College, moving uh, their aviation aerospace program That's right. from the Northwest Campus to the airport. Yes. Um, and again, very strong relationships with our school districts. Um, I've had the opportunity in my lifetime to be, uh, to be brought up in a family where I went to Catholic schools K through 12. Okay. My mom and dad were World War II generation folks, high school education only. And they made sure that the four of us went to college, and we all did. We were very, uh, very fortunate. My children all went to public public schools. Okay. And thankfully, they were a heck of a lot smarter than us. <laughs> so they're all in pre-AP and AP courses. But, but I, I noticed along the way that they were very engaged with a lot of friends who were kind of stuck in the middle, as I often say it. So you got pre-AP kids that are over here. You, you've got kids that are in early college, high school, uh, dual credit programs, CTE programs here. And then there's all these kids that are kind of middle stuck. Maybe figure out what where yeah. they want to do, what they want to do. And there's a bunch of them. Yeah. So I was probably, um, I'm still trying to figure that out. Yeah. I had lunch with the mayor one day and I said, look, I'm, I'm in my early 60s. Um, I love what I do with Hillwood. I'd like to transition into something to do with public school education. So Mayor Parker becomes mayor, and I get a phone call, and we have lunch, and she shared with me this idea of this mayor's council. And the mayor's council is really focused on two things. Okay. Uh, number one, we have a full-time staff person that's actually a T3 associate. Okay. Uh, who spends all of their time on trying to figure out how we do more of moving those kids in the middle into CTE, early college, high school, uh, dual credit programs. And we do that because their success rate uh, after high school is far higher and greater than, again, those kids that barely get out of They've been given a direction or a path. Yeah, puts them in a, puts them in a position of being able to earn a living wage. Yes. And uh, get a series of licenses or certifications or an associate's degree where they can actually go out and get a good job. Right. Okay. So uh, that's that's 
part of our mission. The other part of our mission really is to try to figure out how we do a better job in our community engaging juniors and seniors in high school into the work community. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of young people that go through school and never have a job until they get out of high school. Right. And particularly in our urban districts, little known fact, a lot of people don't know that there's actually 12 school districts inside the city of Fred. I get that all the time, for sure, yeah. Which is amazing. Yes. And somewhat overwhelming when you think about it. But our, ch our, our mission really is to try to figure out how we get these kids more engaged okay. before they get out of high school. And so at your role at Hillwood over the last almost 35 years, you said you've seen a lot of workforce gaps, I would say, I would assume. And that's what you've been working on. And so tell us a little bit about that and how T3 Partnership addresses those workforce gaps. So when you think about um, what's happened over the last three or four years, particularly since COVID, mm -hmm. um, and you think about the, the labor market that we're in today right now, where they're still in Texas, anywhere from 1.3 or 1.5 jobs available for every person looking for a job. The world of recruiting people into the workplace has become incredibly challenging for all of those HR professionals that are out there. So one of the, one of the things we talk a lot to them about is, okay, you're going to have to start to get innovative. One of the ways you can get innovative is to reach further down into the education pipeline yeah. and get these young people more engaged. Make sure that you, you, you either have internships or part-time jobs that you can offer, job shadowing, offering teachers externships, um, something that you can do to engage them into the workplace so that they understand what I ref often refer to as the world of work. Right. Um, really understanding what it means to be in the workplace, working with others, uh, understanding how important professional and soft skills are, um, just to to make sure that we are, as the mayor's council, supporting everything that T3 does. Mm -hmm. And we really are tied at the hip with T3. Yeah. Um, the things that we're doing are very similar to the things that they're doing, uh, but we kind of focused on, on really getting those kids into the workplace and, again, moving as many of the kids in, in high school over into those programs as we can. That's that's amazing. You, you, I think there's two ways you can import talent from somewhere else and bring them here, or you can grow the local talent. What are the benefits of ensuring that we're growing local talent? Well, uh, stating the obvious here, we want our kids graduating from high school to stay here. Yes. Right. Yeah. We want our kids that are graduating from from higher education institutions to stay here. Um, Texas, uh, as we all know, land of opportunity in terms of coming here and being able to really find good jobs. Um, we, we need to be sure that our public schools continue to perform uh, even better than they do today. There's a lot of negative rhetoric out there about our public schools out there, but there's a lot of bright spots, too, that we don't talk, and Def talk enough about. Definitely. Um, I've said this a lot in the last two years since I've been working with the mayor. Um, we, as business people, um, often find ourselves with our kids in public schools and only becoming dissatisfied with perhaps the academic performance of a particular school. We take our child and ourselves and we put them into charter schools, private schools. I have no, no, I, I mean no ill will about charters or privates because there's a place for all of us in this ecosystem. Mm -hmm. But what happens is you lose the parent, you lose the kid out of those public schools. And we as business people need to recognize that those public schools are our future workforce. Mm -hmm. And we don't make that connection often enough. Um, I can tell you from day one, Hillwood and Alliance, education was very, very important to us. We knew that if we we're gonna be successful developing 30,000 acres of land on the north side of Fort Worth, we needed to make sure we had an educated, qualified, trained workforce. And that's been the case since day one. So really another reason why we really went out of our way to make sure we had great educational partners. Well, thank, thanks for what you're doing there. I'll, I will say there are a lot of bright spots in our public education system. I think the rhetoric is out there that, the, that there are problems and issues, and there are. There are with every institution. Um, and if, if the leadership wasn't trying to make it better, then we'd have a problem. But I, I think overall, 
everybody's doing what they can and things like this help. When you got involved with the T3 partnership, what surprised you overall? I guess the thing that was most surprising was the number of different organizations on the west side of DFW Airport that touch public school education. Okay. The number of nonprofits that are out there and other agencies that are engaged with public schools is just incredible to me. So much so that one of the things we t often talk about is making sure that, that because there are so many different entities that are engaged in public school education, we need to make sure that we're being efficient. Yeah. We need to make sure that we stay out of each other's way. Um, and I think we do a pretty good job at that. Uh, no perfect environment, uh, obviously. But that was, that was a little bit overwhelming. Um, the other thing is really, I guess it goes back to making sure that, again, those kids that I, I saw, and my kids all went through verbal schools, Richmond High School, all got a great education. Um, I, I still worry about kids that are in school today that are still a little bit floundering. I think T3... If we can figure out a way to scale T3, that could be a huge difference maker in our community. Because those college advisory corps folks that are working on, pay, on behalf of T3 in our high schools are doing a fabulous job. And I think they really help and actually spend time with these, the, 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 those kids that are again stuck in the middle that, that actually get them on a pathway, get them out of high school on to Ernie Libby Way is doing a great job. So that's wonderful. Well, I'll, I'll say this, the mayor and I sort of share this philosophy that, you know, the government can't do everything, that we need business leaders, businesses to step up to, nonprofits, everybody across the board to address these problems. So I want to say thank you for you stepping up and Hillwood and the other companies that have been a part of this. Uh, as we look at our educational system here, we look at the workforce, the talent development, everything else that we're doing. Thank you for being a part of that. And thank you for having me today. Much Great. appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you, you so much. You bet. And now I'm here with Ashley Ridgeway Washington and Dr. Tricia Elliott from JPS. How are y'all today? Doing great. Thanks for the invitation. Thanks for being here. Uh, we've had some other guests on as, as well, talking about the T3 partnership and what that looks like and really education in the workforce uh, here in Tarrant County. How did JPS become a partner with the T3 partnership? Absolutely. It's exciting to think about how we became uh, partners. This was actually part of a collective vision from our JPS leadership to really kind of think about how we're engaging with our community around teaching and education. We've been longstanding uh, uh, hospital, teaching hospital for many, many years, and we've had students coming through our doors for many years. We have over 3,500 students come through our door every, wow. every year. So in what that, way, when they're coming through, the, yeah. what are they doing? At, Absolutely. Yes, yeah. So we have medical students, we have nursing students, allied health students, pharmacy students, many students from our local uh, universities and colleges come through our doors. And so one of the things we recognize is that we wanted to start the pipeline much earlier. Okay. And we wanted to engage with our community partners who were doing this work. So part of that collective vision was to start a pilot. And so a couple of years ago during COVID, we decided to start a pilot where we would start what we called the JPS Future Healthcare Heroes Program. Okay. Okay. And with that, we partnered with our local ISDs to be able to have some of our CTE students, those career technical education students come through our doors and have that hands-on experience there for us and have mentorship and guidance and partner with our human resources uh, department too to do this collectively across the organization. And so that's where that kind of started. And then we heard about T3 and we've kind of been in some... Uh, uh, similar circles, realizing we're having the same kind of mission and vision around academics and education and training. And so this past year, we really made a concerted effort to kind of come together and really see how we could partner. That's great. And are there certain area or certain ages you're focusing on at this yeah. point? Yeah. Sure. So, you know, I, I'd say as an extension of what Tricia shared, um, Dr. Um, Karen Duncan, Duncan, our CEO, sits yeah. on the mayor's council. Yes. So yeah. As we started thinking about how to expand what we already had, which was Healthcare Heroes, which is a phenomenal program, mm -hmm. how did we then um, create partnership and reduce the lift? So often sure. we talk about um, readiness from a job perspective, and it is both hard skills and soft skills. And when we um, really delved into the T3 model, what we understood is that they provided a solution for both. And so as we thought about how you took the resource further, right? Because academic affairs has capacity, I have capacity, but how do we extend that capacity and reach more students? We really um, view T3 as a great partner in helping us get our students ready to go into the workforce. 
the, uh, you use the term reduce the lift. Yes. That's kind of the idea of, of uh, explain that to me a little bit. Sure. So my grandfather always said many hands make light work. That's great. And so from my perspective, part of our charge is to be an extension into the community. Um, I think often we talk about this challenge of the workforce as if it's something that's happening in a vacuum. Right. It is not only precluding the business or all of business and industry from getting the work that needs to be done done, but it also affects people's ability to feed their children. Sure. And so thinking through how we create the opportunity for dialogue about what the need is versus what the appetite is for the workforce, because it's changing from a generational perspective, yeah. and start to bring those conversations together to coordinate those efforts. And so we view T3 as a partner, um, but more than that, again, um, a, a resource hub in terms of um, exchange of information, exchange of insight, so that they are building students with the capacity to do the jobs that we need done. We need done. I mean, mm -hmm. no doubt healthcare is a big part of our yeah. local economy, right? It's Absolutely. I mean, access to healthcare, what that looks like. Um, how is the workforce development piece important in that part of it? It's absolutely critical. Yeah. Uh, I will say it's one of our top priorities as we're focusing on what we're needing to do, even as JPS Health Network. And these partnerships are so critical for us to really address the workforce shortage. I will say in healthcare across the board, not only uh, in the overall United States, but right here in Texas and North Texas, we're facing a healthcare workforce shortage. A shortage. And I think COVID showed that to us. I think absolutely. it's been short, but COVID really you know, showed where our weaknesses were across the board in healthcare. Absolutely, absolutely. Healthcare across the board is going to be facing a significant shortage right now and in the future. And as we look at projections, even from our state agencies and things like that, as we look at that, we're going to have significant shortages in our nursing uh, workforce, our physician workforce, our allied health workforce, but even these other support areas that we think about across all of healthcare. There's so many opportunities within healthcare. And if we don't do something about it now, we're going to be even having a higher degree of those shortages. And so I think that's why we recognize the need to really invest with those partnerships like T3 and invest in those partnerships across the board to really address this healthcare workforce shortage. Definitely. Yeah. So I would submit that we don't always talk about it from this perspective, but, you know, there's not a shortage of people. That's right. There's a shortage of people who are ready to step into these roles. Yes. And I think there's a myriad of reasons why that's occurring. I think, um, by and large, um, other industries have become sexier, and we don't talk about that. But I also think... Um, I mean, they may not be watching Grey's and Yeah, right? <laughs> Correct. That's right. And so when we it think about <laughs> not only um, exposing students to health care um, in the traditional sense, but actually giving them the opportunity to experience the impact. Yeah. Think about passion-driven work. It is true. Peter Drucker said it 50 years ago, and it remains true. People are the last competitive advantage in business. That is true. the truth. True. And so how do we expose students to the real benefits of coming into a healthcare um, industry or environment and the value that they bring to others, the, the deep connection to the work? But more than that, the breadth of opportunity available. I too, like Natalie, am a reformed attorney, right? <laughs> and I found my home in healthcare yeah. and human capital. Not exactly where I expected to be, but I am have never been happier. That's that's great. So that's, I would just sorry yeah, I wanted to add to that. I think that's so great to talk about that because even from my own personal experience, you know, I'm a family physician by training, and I will say my experience in healthcare started in high school. Oh wow. So every Saturday, how that, how, how, yeah, how and uh, every Saturday, you to it or yeah, yeah. somebody yeah. kind of said my own doctors or other people that I had in my community because I don't come from a healthcare background anywhere in my family at all, and my my dad's a mechanical engineer, and so as you thought about it, we got exposed. I said I want to really have more of that experience, and so having friends and I that go, we went every Saturday, okay, to uh, the local hospital and had that kind of immersive, hands-on. Uh, experience. And so that was what really brought me to medicine, uh, was doing that throughout high school. So being from age 14 to 17 was critical time for me to be able to say that this is what I wanted to do. This is what I wanted to focus on. And that's why I think it's so critical for us to capture and really engage uh, our uh, students much earlier so that they can actually have that immersive, simulative type of experience, hands-on, plus the mentorship and guidance. And really what I love about the relationship that we have also making it a network-wide type of initiative and partnership is that there are those warm handoffs, there are those mentorships, the guidance. It's not just coming in, just having the work and working experience, but it's really meeting people, hearing the stories. 
We've invited them to even come and have panel discussions with our um, all of our healthcare workers across different disciplines. So it's really kind of cool to be able to know that that's critical time uh, for critical time for yeah. And I, I think one idea you brought up is you don't know what you don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it sounds like you both had um, educated parents or at least pushed you in a direction too, yeah. or at least um, made sure you were exposed to something, some things that maybe uh, could, could develop into a career. But we have a lot of you know, students out here that yeah. don't have that same exactly. advantage and the same opportunities. So I, I love that you're giving them this through this, this opportunity. And I, I think I, I learned y'all, there's a curricula you've developed mm-hmm. as part of this. You want to talk a little bit about that, but yeah. Sure. Yeah. So we've actually built upon what we are doing with our future healthcare heroes and really looking at how we're going to expand that even with T3. I think part of the initial piece, we've had two cohorts come through. Okay. And um, what we focus on right now in, in building skills. Okay. So the skills that we're wanting them to build are things in terms of patient care technician skills, uh, the EKG, phlebotomy, and uh, many of them have that experience as they come through and are able to sit for their certifications. Okay. And so that's where we're in the process of that and being able to actually access positions that will utilize those specific certification and those skills. But we want to build even more of those skills, and that's why I really appreciate Ashley's team because they're looking, as she mentioned, those soft skills too. Yeah. And so it's not just about knowing those technical skills, but how do you engage in the work environment, in the healthcare environment? Yeah. And so we're looking forward to even expanding some of those areas that we're going to be focusing on in terms of pharmacy technician, maybe EMT, all those areas too. So those are things we're looking at to um, partner with. That's wonderful. And you know, I would say, um, just to piggyback, um, Trisha, we often talk about T3 as how it really does benefit um, underrepresented students, right? But I would submit to you, particularly in the area of skills development, um, that there is a benefit for all students. Every student. So I am the mother of a 21-year-old. Good, okay. Um, her mother has been an HR executive since she was a little person. Okay, okay. Uh, and I feel like I have done a pretty intentional job about helping her to develop those skills innately. And I will tell you, this generation still continues to really have gaps. Sure. And I think it is it is um, an extension of our society, society as it is today, and that's okay. But I think T3 really does offer value because we talk about soft skills, but really soft skills are hard skills. That's right. And so preparing our students to be able to navigate um, conflict, to be able to de-escalate, to be able to articulate what they need, to be able to self-solution in a environment where they don't have all of the answers. That is much of what the T3 program um, really does help students to start that journey and build that muscle. I will say uh, future future healthcare heroes does a great job of incorporating some of those components as well. But we need more of that for students. Sure. Because those skills really, in many respects, are um, a lost art. And it is irrespective of socioeconomic background. That's right. That's right. True. Yeah. No, I you talk about skills for, you know, adaptability, ability to you talked about um, de- de-conflict and, and mm-hmm. conflict, conflict resolution, yeah. simple skills that you're going to, and no matter what your workplace is, mm-hmm. uh, I wish more actually adults had learned it as, <laughs> but now, <laughs> but, but, but there's still, <laughs> uh, but there's still some time for the, the kids. So, so thank y'all so much for what you do. Thank really you. appreciate y'all being here too and the partnership that you have. I and mean, this is all about a, a better Fort Worth, Tarrant County for tomorrow, right? Absolutely. And I really appreciate what y'all you're doing here and, and exposing you know, students to things they may not otherwise know because we do need an educated workforce as the city moves forward. So thank you all again. Thanks for being thank here today. You. Thank, thank you for the Have a great weekend. Day. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Fort Worth Forward. I hope you've learned a lot about education and the workforce and what a priority it is for us here in the city of Fort Worth. If you have any other interesting topics or ideas you'd like us to discuss, email us at district3 at Fort Worth, Texas. Again, thanks for joining us.